Here we'll discuss some reactor accidents and the lessons learned from them. We'll proceed chronologically. In 1975, there was the Browns Ferry accident, which was a BWR. This was a cable tray fire which disabled the safety tray for a redundant system. In 1977, the David Bessie PWR had a loss of coolant accident from a stuck open pilot operated relief valve at low power. This was not recognized as dangerous. In 1979, at Three Mile Island, which was a PWR, there was another loss of cooling accident from a stuck open pilot relief valve operated at full power. This led to core damage. The lessons learned from this accident were that better training needed to be implemented, loss of coolant detection improvements were implemented, and there were human interface changes to the reactor controls. In 1980, the Crystal River 3 PWR reactor had an improper steam generator controls accident, which led to a loss of heat sink and instrumentation failures. The lesson learned here was to improve procedures. Also in 1980, at St. Lucia 1, again a PWR, there was a pressurizer level anomaly due to a steam bubble which formed in the reactor pressure vessel when cooling down via natural circulation. This, the lesson learned here was that this was a previously unknown phenomenon. In 1980 at Brown's Ferry 3, a BWR, there was a partial failure to insert control rods. The lesson learned was that there needed to be further guidance on incomplete scrams. In 1982, at the Gina PWR, a steam generator tube ruptured. Also in 1982, at Okone 2, a PWR, there was a steam line rupture caused by erosion and corrosion. This led to design review and inspection for adequate piping thickness. In 1983, at the Salem-1 PWR, a reactor trip breaker malfunction resulted in the failure of automatic scram. This led to preventative and corrective maintenance. Also in 1983, at the Arkansas PWR, there were misaligned control rods which corrected too quickly and ended up damaging the core. In 1984, at Connecticut Yankee, again a PWR, there was a seal failure which led to the dumping of 800 kiloliters of water inside of 20 minutes. This led to seal training and testing implemented across PWRs. In 1985, we returned to Davis Bessie where there was a loss of main and auxiliary feed water. This led to extensive upgrades and required the re reactor to be shut down for these upgrades for 18 and a half months. In 1985 at the San Onofre 1 reactor there was a loss of AC power and ground fault which led to a water hammer in the feed line. This led to further preventative maintenance. In 1985 at Rancho Seco there was a loss of power to the control systems and led to an overcooling transient. In 1986, there was the infamous Chernobyl RBMK re reactor accident. This was a super prompt critical core that led to core damage and an environmental release of radionuclides. There are a number of lessons learned from this accident. The first included design changes such as control rods and the addition of containment to the reactor core building. There were also major regulatory changes which came about including the development of an international regulatory response to nuclear reactor accidents. In 1986 at the Catawba 2 PWR, a rapid cool down incident led to a depressurization transient caused by incomplete design process and testing. In 1987, at North Anna 1, a PWR, a pressure tube ruptured, causing the vibration of tubes that had been dented by resin in the initial operating cycle back t 10 years previously in 1978. Here, the, this caused the recognition that previous preventative diagnostics were not sufficient to have predicted this problem. 
In 1988, at the La Salle II boiling water reactor, there was a power oscillation which was caused by neutron flux and thermal hydraulic instabilities, i.e. the flux profile and the heat profile were not flat enough. In 1989, at Catawba, there was a loss of cooling accident precursor event. This led to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's 1150 report on severe accident risks at five different power plants. In 1989, at Sharon Harris, a pressurized water reactor, there was a transformer fire. This led to further examination of secondary component safety that weren't directly related to the core or the coolant loops. In 